Hello everyone. So welcome back to the financial service and API tracks. Uh, sorry that I think that we have some connection issues and we just fix it. Uh, fix it. So uh, now we are now having the sections from uh, Richard Law, the CEO from um, uh, HSBC Hong Kong. So he will be talking about the APIs, the trust, commerce, and connections. So uh, Richard, are you ready? Ready. Thanks for having me, Patrick, and uh, and congratulations again on API days for uh, for 2021. Yeah, welcome back. So um, I think it's time for you to to do a sharing. So can you just try to share the slide on screen? Yes, they are shared. There you go. Yeah, all good, all good. So I pass the time to you. Thanks. Okay, Patrick. thank you very much, Patrick, and uh, and thank you very much, everybody, for making the uh, the time to join uh, join my session today. Um, I guess the uh, um, uh, I'm going to take a slightly different tack um, to some of the other tracks and things that you will be uh, enjoying over over API days. Um, and the uh, and and really that is about uh, just thinking, moving away from the technology for a minute, and um, uh, and starting to think a lot about uh, some of the other considerations we have uh, as we as corporations um, move more quickly into an API connected uh, com commercial world. Um, I want to talk about you know some of the factors that we need to consider beyond just the technology as we uh, as we design and implement our API strategies, and those are really three very very important ingredients, um, and and I call them trust, commerce, and connection. And over the next eighteen or so minutes, I'll share some of uh, my thoughts, uh, sort of guiding some of the activities that we're doing um, uh, as we um, embrace uh, an API connected economy and the, and the opportunities uh, that are there. Um, I think the uh, the uh, the fact is is that you know we're moving into if we're not already in an important next phase, and the um, uh, and that phase is that you know we've moved sort of into the mainstream acceptance uh, and the mainstream adoption phase of of API connected commerce. Um, what was you know previously the the realm of the fintechs and the new entrants. Um, is very quickly, and 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 I guess the uh, the more forward thinking companies is quickly being caught up by by most large organisations, and and pretty well every organisation that I talk to um, is talking to us about increasing the level of connectedness um, between us as a bank and them, and uh, indeed their ecosystems in which they trade and operate. Um, a big part of uh, of of this is, um, I guess, a, a desire by a lot of these companies. Um, to think beyond uh, doing things the same traditional way. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of the discussions I have are really about not only how do we automate the things that we do, how do we speed up the commerce that we're doing today, but also what are some of the new opportunities? And so if we take the view that um, API connected commerce is a, a, a new marketplace, a new realm in which we can connect and do business, then we need to think about some important ingredients to success. And as I say, those are uh, trust, commerce, and connection. So let me talk to them, uh, to each of those in turn. Um, trust uh, is really, really important. Um, uh, and one of the, the things that's different about uh, connecting through an API connected economy is that um, as the provider of an API service, we don't have full control over the engagement or experience that the customers have as they engage with the services that we deliver through APIs. Um, and so as we start to think about um, uh, connecting to partners and to, uh, to customers, et cetera, um, I always like to remind the teams that when we connect through APIs, we're actually putting our reputation out in the open. Now, what does that mean? It means that <clears throat> once you connect via an API, you're providing transactions, data, and services. And those transactions, data, and services go into a channel and that channel, by definition, is uh, is owned and managed by somebody else. So either it's a private channel that allows two businesses connect to automate commerce between them, or it's a platform that's providing services out to third party customers. And we need to be really careful who we partner with, um, because uh, ultimately, when you uh, when you connect through APIs, um, you're betting your reputation on the reputation of the organisation that you connect with. And so a bit of due diligence is really, really important. You need to consider um, how the data and how the services are going to be are going to be used. Um, 
when you connect into a, an API connected environment, there are risks that the data and services that you share, and obviously we can control things, things through access control and security measures and things like that, but you need to be considering and, and be open, uh, open and minded and aware of third party and fourth party risks. What happens if the data that you provide moves beyond the partner that you're connected with and ends up in the hands of somebody that you didn't intend to get it? Um, and you also need to understand that uh, you may not necessarily always have control over where your service is provided. And so this means we need to have a very sophisticated approach to the way that we're employing, um, uh, employing the, uh, the, the APIs that we offer to our partners and customers. Um, API security is really important. Uh, it's a new threat vector. Uh, we're providing connectedness to third party systems and we're providing uh, access to data and services, as I keep saying. Um, a poorly designed or misused API could present a risk to your business. Uh, it may not be um, network access risk. It may not necessarily be a way to get into, uh, into your network domain, but it could be that, um, uh, that somebody misuses your data or, or, is, or, or attempts to, uh, to misuse or alter the service that you're provide, providing. And so you need to make sure that you're not only thinking about connectedness, but you're thinking about security and you're thinking about uh, control and you're thinking about risk management mit mitigation. And that extends to the functionality of the API and the data that, uh, that is, uh, is uh, transmitted. And of course, um, you can't ignore compliance. Um, the fact that we're doing uh, you know, business at light speed and that we're doing business through automated connections doesn't take away, uh, certainly in our position as a bank, doesn't take away our obligations um, for uh, compliance with the necessary regulations. So the things that we need to do for know your customer, KYC and customer due diligence, um, uh, anti-money laundering, sanction screening, um, fraud mitigation, all those sorts of things still apply. And we can't pass those obligations on to our partners. If we're providing a service, and we're providing that through an API connected community, then uh, we have an obligation to make sure that our um, legal commitments and legal, legal obligations and compliance requirements are, are met. Um, and these are really important because any breach of any of these, um, and this is a, a high level conversation, obviously there's a lot of detail on every subject, but a, a, any breach of these compromises your trust and, with your customers and, and, and compromises uh, or risk compromising your reputation in the market. And so I do implore you that as, as everybody gets excited and everybody starts moving so quickly to, um, uh, to connect through APIs, that we do take the opportunity to, um, uh, to think about what we're going to do to protect our reputation and maintain the trust of our customers. The next important consideration is commerce. Um, I have seen examples out in the wild where the desire to, um, to, to create these connections between partners um, sometimes move faster than taking a brief pause to think about the why uh, we're doing it and thinking about the what's in it for me. Um, these things are not, APIs are just not a, an opportunity to speed up the way you, you do things now. And they are opportunities for us to come up with new products and services. Um, and, and these new products and services, I'm sure there are plenty that we haven't even thought of yet. Um, you know, connected commerce uh, through APIs is still in the very early days. And, and just like any new domain and any new marketplace, we will learn over the course of time and identify new opportunities. Um, some of those opportunities are going to be in places that you don't necessarily see them today. Um, there are going to be opportunities as you look up and down the value stream of your partners uh, in the partnership that you've entered um, to see places where you can add value and you can add value for commercial benefit. Um, you need to think about the commercial model. Um, you know, APIs uh, create for a, an exchange of value and that value in a lot of cases needs to be commercialized. So if I'm providing a transaction or a service to my partner, what should I receive in that turn, uh, in return? Should I get a fee? Um, should I get a share of revenue um, or should I get something else? Should I get uh, data or should I get access to customers to offer additional products and services? Um, and you need to have those conversations early. You need to make sure that as you are connecting with your partners, that you, you understand why you're doing it and what's in it for you. Because remember, it is a business after all. Um, you then need, really need to think about data rights. Um, because in addition to the, trans, uh, the transfer of uh, transactions, um, a lot of data can come with it and you need to understand well, what rights and entitlements that you have um, with relation to that data. Uh, how long can I keep it for? What can I use it for? Um, can I unsell it? 
Can I create new products and services? Can I use this data to sell products and services directly to the customers? And these are all very important uh, questions to be answered. And some players in the market are very, very sophisticated. They've been doing this for a while. And so I encourage you as you start to think about your API connected uh, connection strategies, that you spend some time thinking about your data rights and entitlements. And then the last thing to think about um, uh, the commerce aspect is to think about customer models, uh, customer engagement models. Um, where do you sit in the relationship with the customer? Um, who does the customer support? Is, is it you dealing with the customer or is it the partner dealing with the customer? And if the support falls to you, can you support it? When you connect through APIs, your office hours change. If you're going into a platform that's operating 24 hours a day in every country in the world, do you have a support model to be able to support it? Um, and when you do support it, what additional engagement rights do you have? You need to have a conversation about your role with respect to the end user customer and how you're going to, um, to support and manage and ma maintain that on a commercial basis. And so the second dimension of commerce is a really important one. Um, sometimes in technology, you know, we race to do things because they can be done. But in the case of connecting our businesses through APIs, we really need to have a long uh, conversation and be very clear about the commercial reasons why and how the partners are going to be rewarded. Because quite frankly, if you don't have that commercial balance in place, it's not sustainable. If somebody is uh, being disadvantaged or somebody's not able to make an adequate return on the cost or capital that it takes to put into uh, to be in the business of providing or using the APIs, then the model's not going to work. And eventually the business is not going to be able to afford keep, to keep doing it. So do spend some time thinking about the commercial considerations and how to, uh, to, to make sure that they're in balance. And the balance is a really important word. The last thing is to think about connection. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing that's, um, that's different about APIs, um, uh, the, um, the thing that's different about APIs, sorry, is that um, it's a different connectedness. They're 24 seven, they're always on. If I go and provide a service into a large e-commerce platform, they're on 24 seven hours a day and their volumes can be very, very volatile. Um, you know, we all know that consumers, for example, are being really well trained for peak sales events on the internet. Um, if you think about Singles Day 11.11 in China, or you think about the Diwali pre-sales that happen in India, or you think about um, uh, Black Friday and now Cyber Monday in the US, um, there are plenty of places, uh, activities that, that are teaching consumers to concentrate the transactions into very short periods of time. And these create what I call hyper volumes. And those hyper volumes can have big impacts for the systems and processes that you have inside your business. Can you support 10,000 transactions a second? Well, what about 10,000 transactions a second from 10 different partners? What about 10,000 transactions a second from 100 different partners? And those are considerations that you have to that you have to take into account as you're planning your API strategies. And there's two really important dimensions. There's capacity. So can I handle the hyper volumes of a connected commerce world? And there's time. Can I get the data backwards and forwards quick enough? Um, these uh, uh, connected marketplaces uh, and connected uh, environments move at light speed. You know, they're, they're wanting to see, have an API, send a query, get a result in sub one second times quite often. Can your systems support that? Can you get the data out in a, in a, um, a way that is going to be able to support the volumes and the velocity of the business that's coming? Um, you need to also make sure that, you, uh, that you're clear on availability. If the API is commerce is going to be 24-7, are your systems 24-7? And is your organisation shaped to support it? Um, can you be there should there be an outage? Can you be there if you need to respond to performance issues? Um, and, and what are your obligations and responsibilities in that? And again, the whole issue of connection comes back. And it's the same point that I used in my first measure of trust. And that is you need to make sure that you have security under control. So with that, I'd like to just um, leave, uh, leave those thoughts with you, if that's OK. The, um, uh, the message I have for you today is, you know, while we're all here talking about technology and we're talking about the amazing tools and techniques that have emerged, I, I personally um, sit back and look in respectful awe at the velocity of the API uh, industry. Um, the technology advances and the thinking and the creation and the innovation, innovation that we're seeing um, is outstanding. There's some big brains working on hard problems and we're seeing the benefit of that. 
that technology only works when the business balances with it. And hopefully this morning I've been able to share a few ideas and a few uh, comments that allow you to, um, uh, to think about the fact that when we do turn these things on, we're going to turn them on in a business world. Um, a, a big piece of advice, particularly those of you in large corporations, is engage with all your necessary internal partners early. Um, you know, for the companies that have uh, have risk stewards, the companies that have people who, who govern and monitor the, the uh, commercial models, for the people who have to work out how we're going to work with customers and how we're going to support these services, bring them on the journey early and get them involved in the planning and get them involved in the discussions and make sure that everybody has a shared view and a shared vision for where we're going to go with our API connected business. But most importantly, too, is look for new opportunities and be ex prepared to experiment. You know, this is a brave new world. We definitely don't know all the commercial opportunities that are out there yet, and we'll be surprised to see some amazing new opportunities come before us. Um, so do take the time to understand, take the time to get the data and learn, take the time to listen to your customers very, very intently, take the time to co-create with um, your, uh, uh, with your uh, partners and your customers and use that information to help continue to evolve and define um, your evolution in the API connected world. But most importantly, don't wait. As I said at the very start of my presentation, uh, we've moved into the mainstream acceptance uh, uh, phase of, of API connectedness. Uh, even a year ago, you know, it was the forward thinkers, it was the market leaders, it was the innovators and the fintechs who were dominating the conversation. Now a lot of big old companies are coming into uh, the fray and they're, they're looking for opportunities, as I say, to leverage API technology to be able to, um, to not only fast track their business, but do business in new ways and provide extra value for their customers. Connect with them, create with them, and use this opportunity to create uh, an exciting new marketplace for yourself and your customers. And with that, I'll throw it over to questions. Okay, thanks, uh, Richard. So, um, yeah. Hello, thanks, Richard. So, um, uh, your, yeah, I can see your content is mainly on uh, trust and uh, also commerce and also connections. So, back to the trust. Um, I, I, I think that uh, in the past uh, one or two years, uh, we also have some chance to work with banks, also talk to some uh, third parties. And we, we do have different uh, understanding talking about trust because especially for banks, uh, it may relate to professionalism, knowledge, uh, low how, etc. So do you have any uh, quick tips or experience uh, how the bank uh, will, will actually uh, set up the, the trust uh, talking about with Pala because uh, maybe some of the Pala may be in from different industry, from education, from tourism. So how the banks can uh, uh, better understand the list from different people and set up the trust. Do you have any quick uh, sharing? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Look, look, uh, you know, people are kind of funny about their money. You know, they, they, kind of <laughs> like to think, they kind of like to think that when they put it in the bank, it's going to be there when they want to go and get it. And so so trust is, uh, it's, it's fundamental to the business of being in a bank. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so we take trust very seriously. Um, and that trust not only extends to sort of security and protection of the data and, and the money, but also about making sure that we respect how people's data is used, um, how we are, um, uh, 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 how we're providing access to products and services. And so it's important when we're partnering with, uh, with our customers and our, cu and our partners that we talk about that, that we talk about the fact that, you know, if, if HSBC's reputation is at stake in a partnership, our reputation and our stance on trust is positioned because of those obligations to our customers. So um, and sometimes that can be a bit challenging for some uh, for some customers that aren't in a regulated industry that don't necessarily have the, the fundamental principles of trust right at the core of their brand proposition. And so we need to find that we have to um, that we have to have a bit of a balance. You know, we need to talk openly about it um, and understand that, uh, that that sometimes we're coming from slightly different perspectives. Now, with the right partnerships, our commitment to trust can be very valuable because if we provide our customers with a verified identity with somebody that we know has been through KYC, with somebody that with tools and, and mechanisms to protect against uh, anti-money laundering and fraud and sanctions management and things like that, then we can bring a lot to the party to uh, to customers that may not necessarily be in a position to do that. So blessing and a, a blessing and a challenge, um, but the most important thing is to talk about it. Yep, yep. And another question is that um, I think um, a lot of uh, Pala actually actually want to partner with banks like HSBC. So do you have one or two tips? Because I think um, some of 
the 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 part may have a really good volume of business, uh, good traffic, but they don't have uh, experience to work with banks. So yeah. do you have one one or two uh, tips to them so that they can yeah, get well, the PPA before <laughs> before they talk to you? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same question as last year, Patrick. So so <laughs> same answer. Um, look, we're big, like we're really really big. Uh, we trade in something like 60 odd countries um, and, and there's an opportunity uh, for partners who partner well with us to leverage our scale and our reach um, uh, to, to better serve markets, certainly across Asia Pac. You know, we're, we're in just about every country in Asia Pac. Um, and so there's a really good opportunity for you to partner together, but you need to come to us understanding that that's where we come from. You know, like, if we're going to, this market is moving so quickly and is so global that it's hard for us to be too committed to a partner with a small proposition in a small market. Um, we need to work with partners who have a multi-country proposition that will work at the scale that we need to work at. Um, they also need to understand that um, that because we are a regulated industry, sometimes things take a little longer than uh, than you would like. Than maybe if two companies just to get together and work. Um, but ask about it. You know, something's not going as quick as you'd like. Ask why. Um, it's not for the lack of ambition. It's not for the lack of desire to support our partners. In some cases, our, being a regulated business makes us have to work in a certain way. Um, and the other thing is be ready, be ready to go. Um, I see partners who come to us and when I start talking about those things like availability, okay, we're going to turn this thing on, we're going to launch it in 20 countries and we need 24 seven uh, support in 10 languages. Can you go? Um, deers in the headlights, right? They haven't thought yep. about what it's going to take to be a yep. partner of a great big bank. And so, you know, be ready when you come to uh, come to approach to us for opportunities. Yeah, got that, got that, yeah. Yes, especially I think talking about the open API framework, uh, these two years, uh, don't, although there's some quick push, but I, I, I would believe that there's a lot of uh, uh, people try to uh, see what kind of opportunity will be suitable so that we can see quite some interesting discussion there. So yeah, I think I think that's, uh, that's all uh, of, uh, about the question that I can cascade and then let me double check any further. Yep, I, I think that's all uh, about the question that we have. So I uh, really thanks uh, Richard for your time here. And then uh, if you, uh, any one of you want to reach out Richard, feel free to uh, drop the email to Richard yeah. and then try to pitch them <laughs> if you have yeah. any good, yeah, good yeah. ideas. Yeah. And, and reach out on LinkedIn or reach out on the contact details or, or Patrick knows where to find me. So if you can't find yeah. me any other way, <laughs> ping Patrick and, uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, and get to us. Um, and given that I've got two minutes, uh, I just want to commend you, Patrick, and the yeah. team for this great initiative. Um, you know, I know you're very passionate about building this API economy, certainly in Hong Kong and the region, uh, and I see you guys are going global. So congratulations very and uh, and i wish you every success for the conference and and uh, and everybody let's go out and change the world right we're doing some good stuff here. so so thank you very much for having me yeah thanks thanks again richard for your support again this year